Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, glorious Father. Thank you, glorious Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, God. We give you praise. 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 In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lamb of God, who takes away all of the sins of the world. We give God praise for this moment. We thank God for allowing us to be here. Thank God for all of you that are with us by way of the Lifeline, by way of Facebook Live and YouTube. Amen. We thank God for this time. Thank you for being with us on today. Amen. We celebrate this moment, this another milestone, amen, in our lives of allowing us to be here. We thank God for this moment. Amen. So shout out to those who are following us from um, Facebook Live. God blessings to you. And for those of you who are following us from YouTube uh, Live, the Lord bless you. And the Lifeline and uh, all of you, the Lord's children, we are so excited for this moment. God's blessings. God's choices blessings to all. Amen. Mother Williams, we thank God for you. Thank you for being with us on today. Amen. We're just going to go, amen, into our lesson. Hallelujah. We've been praying. We did not realize that we were on mute. We were on mute while we were praying. Um, we were preparing things to get ready to go live. And while we were preparing our monitors and preparing, amen, to share this platform with others, we were already in prayer mode, praying uh, that um, God would give us great success, give us success as we would go forth into our broadcast. We did not realize that we were muted, but nonetheless, we're here. And uh, we, so we're going to move forward into our lesson. And uh, we're thanking God for this moment. Thank God for you, Sister uh, Stacy Desaline. Blessings of the Lord rest upon you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, all of you, Lord's people. We're not going to to tard be any tardy, or we're not going to delay the lesson. We're just going to get into it. We're looking at Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through 17. Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7, 1 through 17. Amen. And we thank God that this is the culmination of... Um, the sealing of the first through the six seals. The first through the six seals. The Bible tells us that John was in uh, in the throne room of God, and um, for he who sat on the throne, God Almighty, who sat on the throne, uh, there was a book in his right hand, and that book had seven seals, and no one in heaven nor under heaven nor uh, uh, in the earth, nor under the earth, was able to open the book, to look thereupon, and or to read what was in the book. John began to weep. And one of the elders said, John, don't weep, because the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open the book to us. And when John turned around to see uh, who it was that was uh, talking, because he said the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open the book. John, I can only imagine he's turning about to see uh, the one that is talking to him, looking for a lion uh -huh, of the tribe of Judah, but he's not seeing the lion of the tribe of Judah. Instead, he sees a lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. And uh, I like that because this is basically telling us that the, lion, the lamb is the lion and the lion is the lamb, but they're serving at different distant, di di dis different dispensational times, different dispensational times. Whereas uh, the, the, the lion, he is representing in a time that will come, he's representing rulership, he's representing victory, he's representing uh, conquering, He's representing, uh, 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 um, yeah, rulership. 
He's representing a lot of that. A lot of that you'll see happen later in the book of Revelations. But uh, in this passage, uh, the lion is basically uh, is introduced. But while the lion is introduced, that's because he will come. He will come in his strength. But before he come in his strength, one uh, like unto that's kind of it's just opposite his his demeanor his approach is opposite he choose to to uh lead or serve god through that of grace and grace is uh is the the, the leading um anthem of the day because of his grace we are say grace brought us your grace calls us to repent grace forgives us of the sins we've committed and i thank god for this period in which we're in a period of great grace and that is channeled to us uh and i and i don't well that is uh brought to us by that of the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world and so just a little snippet of what we have been talking about I see you, Dana Gomez, woman of God, great evangelist there in uh, 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 South America area, Brazil. God blessings to you. Uh -huh. um, and one of the things that it talks about, it talks about the white horse. The white horse uh, is, is representing that of the Antichrist. He definitely tried to be like that of God. He's always tried to be like that of God. He wants to wear the appearance of God, look like God, act like God, do things that God would do, but he's not God. Uh, that's right, Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. I see you. God blessings to you. Amen. Uh, lady uh, Dana Gomez, thank you. Uh, so the white horse represent that of the Antichrist, totally against the things of Christ. We, we, we And that was the first seal, which was un. Lace. And then we talked about the second seal. The second seal has to do with a red horse. And uh, this red horse introduced, it talks about where fear was introduced. And uh, this has to do with peace being removed from the earth. We talked about that. And then it says that uh, people will kill one another out of the fear of uh, gaining the advantage. And then we talk about the black horse. There's a pair of balances in his hands. Great hunger, poverty, destitution, and a great time—a time of great scarcity. Uh, this is happening in, with that of the black horse, and then we talked about uh, the pale horse. The pale horse—that's the fourth seal. The fourth seal being opened that has to do with the pale horse, and it talks about death. Uh, the pale horse represents death, but it says, "And hell followed him." Hell follow him. Many will go the great length to save their lives and shall lose it. A great time of deception. Uh -huh. that, that time when uh, death is on the rampage, riding a pale horse. Now, don't go out looking for a physical horse. These are things done spiritually in the spirit realm. And if you don't have eyes to see nor ears to hear, you're going to miss it. You're not going to know what time it is. You're going to miss what time it is. That time could be upon you right now, and you won't even have a clue except you're in the Word of God. If you're in the Word of God and walking in the Spirit of God, then you come to know these things. Let me say that again. If you're reading the Word of God, reading it, read it, read it, and read it. Read it to remember it. Read it to become affluent in it. Read it to know it. Read it to study it. Read it to like it. Read it to love it. Read it to make it a part of your life. Notice, I'm not utilizing the term study it, but I'm talking about reading it. Why is that? Well, one reason why I'm utilizing the term, I know the scripture says study, uh, the study to show thyself approved, a workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I understand that. But my appeal to you is to read it. So often time when we uh, uh, study the word, study the word, we want to study it like we study an exam or studying a test or studying someone's thesis or, 
or, or, or studying like we're doing, studying somebody's essay. We're scrutinizing it. We're scrutinizing what is being said, how it's being said, even to the to the point that we're ready to change the phraseology of it, to change the grammar of it, rewrite the grammar, reconstruct the sentence, redo this, redo that, because it's not politically correct or it's not grammar, gr grammatically correct. So we scrutinize it to change those forms. And we've become so accustomed to that form of studying until if you're not careful, you want to do the Bible the same way. But don't do that because that's when you mess things up. No, read the Bible. Don't try to change the wordings. Don't try to change the cometh, the heareth, toeth, doweth, forth. Don't try to change the uh, the wording or the matter of uh, 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 the way it is rendered to you. And if it's rendered a little different, and in your nation, in yours, uh, 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 to your language, what you've grown accustomed to, if it's written a little different, listen. Embrace what you know. Embrace it the way your culture read it. Embrace it from that perspective and stick with it. Don't be so quick to jostle around with all these different translations and thinking that you've got the best one, but get the one that you, uh, get one and stay there. Get one and read it and learn it and stick with it and that's it. And don't try to battle with people with what they see and how they see it from their rendition uh, 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 maybe it was written directly for them through their culture. I don't know how, but however, don't try to debate with them. Just hold on to that which you know. Give full attention to that which you've known. Give good understanding to the way you've understand it and stand on that. Don't let anyone else try to take that from you. And when you do these things, you begin to read it to remember it. Read it to know it. Read it to, uh, 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 to build your life around this and to love it and to have relationship with it. That's when you're going to see the biggest return. But when you study it as we have learned what study means, then we're going to start trying to change the gr grammatically form of it. Uh, and we're going to start looking at it from a different perspective, changing words, changing this. Then it doesn't mean that it means this. It doesn't mean that right there. And this is how, and then you're going to change, you're going to change the whole um, form of it and water it down. No, read the scriptures, read it and understand it. Read it. If it was grammatically wrong from what you understand it, know that that's how they wrote it then. That's how they looked at it then. That was the historical setting of it then. Embrace it then and, 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 and liken it to today and ask God to help you. Walk in the spirit. Do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Come to understand the scriptures with us and watch God do some uh, 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 awesome things in your life. Hallelujah. That's right. Um, Thank you, Kenny Perry. He said, "Be respectful uh, to each other uh, at resourceful at resources for independent living." So, listen, uh, just learn to, to be um, uh, respectful each other. I, I like that. Be respectful toward each other. Amen. And um, amen. Don't learn to be so argumentative, but just read the scripture, learn the scriptures, know the scripture, and then ask God to, to show you how to. How, how to share his word with others. How, how do I share this word with others? How do I share it in a way to enlighten them, to impart wisdom to them, to, uh, 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 to be able to impart knowledge unto them? How do I share this word for that reason? Not to battle, not to try to look as if I'm better than somebody else. That is not the case. I see you, Kenny Perry. God bless to you. We're so happy to have you with us on today. Thank you. And so we're, we're looking at it from that perspective. So we talked about the pale horse. The pale horse represents death. And the Bible says, and hell followed with him. We also went as far and we talked about uh, from the, from the uh, fourth seal, the fourth seal, we went and we talked about the sixth, the fifth seal, the fifth seal. Yeah, we talked about the fifth seal. 
And this is, it says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that, uh, that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. That's self-explanatory right there. And let me read it again. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice. In other words, these are they that were martyred. These are the martyred ones. This had to do with them. So a seal would open for the martyred. Uh -huh. In other words, here is a special time, a special place, a special period in this book that uh, something is exclusively for those that are of the martyred, those who was martyred for uh, uh, um, the, the, their belief in Jesus Christ. And it says, patience of the martyred, white robes are given unto them. Yeah, for the martyred. And then from the martyr, we went on down to uh, the sixth seal. The sixth seal, it talks about a black, uh, um, it says, um, it says, and I beheld when he had opened the black, um, the sixth seal, a, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And, and I didn't, I don't think I said a horse because this is not a horse here. Um, the, the last horse, I think I remember with the pale horse. Uh, but this here, it says that there was an earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. The stars fell from heaven and from earth, and fell from heaven to earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely fig when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So if you look at that from the physical perspective, uh, people wouldn't know what to understand because we've never had an earth, a sun, a sun, or start to fall to the earth. We've had meteorites. We've had certain uh, uh, objects and debris uh, from the, the, the heavens to fall to the earth, to clash into the earth. And, and it only takes history to tell how catastrophic that were to, uh, to those who were in that region, but how it did some damage. But it's not talking about a, a, a meteorite. It's talking about a star. And, and then if you understand it, there are stars, there are stars that, um, that are about the size of the sun. Uh, scientists want to believe that every star, every star is like our sun. <clears throat> our sun is really a star to this solar system. And every star is a sun to some solar system. And, you know, I don't doubt that because when I hear stuff like that, it just make me look at God in a whole huge, another a whole nother echelon of, of way, another way that I'm like, wow, wow, wow. All I can say is wow of God, amen. And God can do that because he's God. So when I think of something like that, all I can say is wow. But then you got to understand to have that size of a star to fall from to the earth. But then it didn't say, uh, um, notice what it says now. And, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. The stars of heaven fall unto the earth. When I look at this, then I'm not looking at the star that we're so used to seeing uh, that is a sun to a different galaxy, but I'm seeing the stars as that of uh, life source, uh, intelligence, uh, just as uh, the Lord gave reference to them in the Old Testament, talking about uh, uh, that was a dragon who drew one third of the heavenly host with him, the stars of heaven, uh, those uh, uh, intelligent light form, those angelic hosts, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth. Uh -huh. And then even as a fig tree casts her untimely fig when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Now, in this place, if you're not grasping it, if you don't really understand it, and, and then you want more clarity, just ask God to give you more clarity. And, and again, we're not going to debate this because the unique thing about this is, where do you stand? Do you doubt this? Are you a non-believer? A non-believer and someone who came to a place that I'm just not fully convinced in what all of it, 
of just certain things because there's somebody who might just be uh, uh, um, lacking or just a non-believer in all of this, then th this is not for you. If you are a believer and some of this, you, 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 you're gripping it and you're saying, Lord, I don't understand this one. Uh, this one here, this part here, there's something a little hard for me. That's not being deceived. That's not being misled. That's not causing you to mislead other people because of that situation there. You're simply not fully understanding the scriptures. So that's a different ball game for somebody who is a non-believer. That's a different situation for somebody who just don't believe God, who don't want to believe God. And you have, because to, to, to become an unbeliever, an unbeliever, you've heard the word, and now you've left with a decision. You choose not to make the decision of retaining him. Uh, and you've choose to not believe him. But all of the evidence are there. But you show, simply choose not to believe him. That's what we're talking about. But for somebody who you really believe, but you're having a problem with a specific thing, a specific scripture, uh, that's different. You're not being misled. You're not misleading others, whether you believe uh, uh, um, a post-rapture or pre-rapture. That's that's not somebody that that's a non-believer. That's not somebody who is against God. That's somebody who is for God, but they're just having problem understanding the scripture. There, God will work with that person, and 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 any person who was a believer will work with such a one to bring them into understanding. But <clears throat> for a person who just don't want to believe, they rather argue down and deceive you. That's a different situation. Yeah. And, and so um, we talked about these things. We talked about the rich men, uh, the mighty men, the great men, kings of the earth, uh, the chief captain and, and uh, bondsmen, free men. All of this was in our lesson when we talked about the seals and that has to come down to uh, the sixth seal. Now we're into the seventh seal and the seventh seal uh, um, is, is where we are right now. But we're not, matter of fact, we're not in the seventh seal. We are still in the sixth seal. Certain things had to open. Certain things have to take place. Certain things have to take place before we get to uh, the eighth seal, um, the seventh seal. But the seventh seal does not come to us until at least around thing verse or chapter eight. When we get to chapter eight, then we talk about opening the seventh seal. So right now we're in chapter seven. We are not breaking the seventh seal now. We're dealing with the culmination between uh, breaking of seal one and breaking of seal number six. Breaking of seal one and breaking of seal six. So this is not seal number seven. So we're looking at this as uh, a sealing of two classes of servants of our God before the great tribulation period. And, and these are the things we're talking about today. The sealing of two classes of servants of our God before the great tribulation period. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Uh, I will take away from this is our God who cannot lie, allow this prophecy to serve as his future plans concerning his creation of man. Our God who cannot lie, allows this prophecy to serve as his future plans concerning his creation of man. So now we go into chapter seven. And after these things, I saw four angels. I saw four angels. Standing on, and, and it notice, let me just back up. I, I like that it says four angels. It did not specify four cherubims. It did not specify four seraphims. And it did not specify uh, 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 um, four beasts here, nor uh, of any of the uh, uh, elders. It did not say, I saw four elders or four cherubims or seraphims. It says, but I saw four angels. That's a different classification here. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners 
of the earth, holding the four winds of the wings, um, uh, holding the four uh, winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. You know, I've often talked about the seraphims, I've talked about the cherubims, and I've talked about the angels. And when I read in the Bible, there are times when I'm looking at the seraphims, um, the seraphims look like they are depicted as those who are offering up some type of sacrifice, some type of, uh, of, uh, of something before the Lord. And they have a, a sense, a, 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 a vow. They have some orders. They have something, and they're around the throne. And so I see them as <clears throat> administering uh, the ordinance of heaven before God. I, I see them standing. As we have come to know the priest in our day, uh, so the seraphims would be those that does that type of work in the heavenly um, a spear of things. And the cherubims, the cherubims, most of the time they're depicted, I said most of the time they're depicted with, with wings and uh, they're depicted with a sword. They're depicted with a sword, maybe a shield, uh, but they, uh, uh, for war, for protection, for uh, uh, different things like that. And when you see angels, angels are not always, you don't always see them with wings. They does not always carry wings. Uh, you don't always see them at that. But most time when, when men or human encountered them, they just saw a being that looked like a man. And it probably shined. He probably, his face probably shined. And they probably could not look at his face. And, and uh, But he did certain mystical things. What do you mean mystical things? Maybe just appeared out of nowhere and then had lightning speed just popped in and popped out. I remember a situation that I was I was in Germany and I was uh, driving. I was on um, I was on wet cobblestone highway, and while we was driving on this wet cobblestone highway, I lost control of my vehicle, my little BMW, and I I was just knew I was gonna crash. Uh, the, the the all the stone was was slick and wet. And uh, there was a great big old stone pillar in front of me, one that held up the light pole. And it was pretty good size, real big. And, uh, and on the opposite side of that was a deep ravine. And between both of them was the cobblestone road. It wasn't really going fast, but when I lost control, the car began to propel and spin. And when I... When it began to spin, all I can do is click and, and grasp the steering wheel and shout, Jesus! And then the car, it turned the opposite side, aside, and I shout, Jesus again! And the car turned the opposite way. And each time I'm shouting Jesus, I'm not able to turn my steering wheel. I'm just able to shout Jesus. And then there was a vehicle coming right at me. It was coming right it was on the cobblestone road and uh, like again, a great big old pillar on one side and a deep ravine on the other side. And when I saw it, Jesus! And it, I don't know how that truck, it was when, the next time I saw it, I was, I was facing when I'm shouting Jesus. And when I shouted Jesus, I didn't see the truck. But when I looked in my rear view mirror, the truck was behind me the ravine was on one side of me, and uh, the, the the big old ste um, uh, uh, granite, a uh, marble, concrete pillar was on the opposite side of me, and then uh, the car kept spinning and zigzagging across the road uh, until it came to an embankment, and there was no ravine on that embankment, and my car laid sideways, like sideways into it and rest. I don't know. My eyes was big. <laughs> I was sweating. Uh, there's a thing I use. I use it when I'm talking about other people that when you're scared, I say you had sausage eyes. I just get real big, like just hang down like sausage. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't know what to do. 
I was in a panic mode, but when I got out of the car to do an assessment of the vehicle, there was nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with the vehicle. Everything was good. Vehicle cranked up, just a little mud on the tires, didn't hit the concrete barrier that held up a big light pole, uh, didn't fall in the ravine, and the truck that was coming head on, I don't know how it made it behind me. And I mean, I'm in, I don't know how, I don't know how. The, the, the road was not big enough to allow that to happen. I don't know how. All I know, all I can know, do is just thank God that, Father, you sent one of your angels. This is not one that had wings, but in a split second, it grabbed the car and it moved it out of the way and it allowed that truck to pass. I don't know how it happened. That's what's the unique, that's the unique thing about a miracle because you cannot, no matter how long you live, no matter how, what, when, where, you just cannot figure how it happened, but it happened. And I thank God that it happened. And angels are responsible for a lot of situations like that. You, you don't see them with wings. But lightning speaks, zip, zang, zip, and they're in, they're out. At the speed of thought, they're in and they're out. And that happened to me. Uh, the Lord brought me out of a lot of situations. And why does he love me so much? I'm not even going to say. I, I, I just thank God that I'm humbled. I'm humbled that he tolerate my life. I'm humbled that he loved me. I'm humbled that he keep delivering me. I'm just pleased that he did. And the more I think about it, yeah, to God be all of the glory because he makes no mistakes. Uh, the lesson says, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corner of the earth, having the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. This angel has not so much got to be big, he doesn't necessarily have to be big, but the authority given to him, the authority given to him has got to be awesome, has got to be powerful, that you can just hold back the wings of the wind, hold back the wind so that the wind does not blow on the earth. And it's not so much that you are super gigantic, just so enormous that you are doing this, but because your authority, your authority expands all of the east until the east touches, um, uh, um, yeah, touches the south and the north, and the, the 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 west touches the south and the north, and then the north touches the east and the west, and vice versa, until when your span of authority is so great until all it takes is four angels, four angels. God has designed this in such a unique way. He's given them the authority to do so. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the wing, wind earth, the four winds of the earth, the north, the where, the north, the east, the south, uh, uh, and the west wind so that they will not blow on the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on the trees. Four angels of direction, four winds of the earth. And I saw another angel, uh -huh, another angel standing. Uh, 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 so I saw another angel ascending from the east. He's ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and uh, the sea. And this, this angel, this one angel here, looked like it's one that carries authority. This angel looks like one that stands in the presence of God. He is a messenger angel. He is an angel that carries a message, carries the authority, releases great authority and power and wisdom, and he uh, 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 speaks uh, uh, whatever God tells him to. He speaks that to those others that are in authority. Don't ever think that God does not believe in order. This shows God. our God is a God of order. Our God is a God of rank structure. 
Our God is a God that he does things. He delegates authority to those whom he sees fit to delegate them. If you're not a person who, who understands authority, you're going to miss out. If you're not a person who loves authority, you're going to miss out. If you're not a person who's driven and, and, and believe that things should be done decently and in order, you're going to miss out on some things here because that's how God is running his heavens. And you don't see that God is actually doing this himself, but God is delegating the authority and having it done. And I saw another angel. His angels is carrying out these assignments. The angels of God is making these things happen. You don't see God actually doing it, but you see the angels of the Lord doing these things. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corner of the earth, holding the four winds of the wind that the, the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on the trees. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the Lord God. He have the seal. He, he is authorized to do so. He have the seal of the Lord God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels. He's speaking to them. He cried to a loud voice to the four angels uh, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. They, they are authorized to hurt the earth. They are authorized to hurt the sea. But that's not the message he's giving them. They're authorized to do it. It's in their power. It's in their authorization to do this. But the angel that comes to them is saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the service of our God in their forehead. Until we have sealed the servants of our God in the forehead. When we have done this, then you can move forward. But there's a few people that we need to seal first. All right. So this is the culmination of this lesson. And verse one, two, and three tells us this, that there have got to be a sealing of the Lord's people. So today in our lesson, we want to talk about two classes of people that are being sealed. And that's why we addressed it this way today in our lesson, the sealing of two classes of servants of our God uh, before the great tribulation period. And the first, the first uh, um, group of people that will be sealed, the first group of people that will be sealed is here. It says the, uh, oh, and, and let me read uh, verse three. Uh, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the tree, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. In their foreheads. And then verse number four. Now we have the sealing of the 44,000. Sealing of the 44,000. All right? Let's look at that. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed and hundred and forty and four thousands. Check this out. Of all the tribes of the children of Israel, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. This is very necessary. This is vastly necessary that this group of people <clears throat> are sought after and that they are sealed. This is a special remnant for the Lord. This is a special um, batch for the Lord. It's almost like uh, your pastor on um, his anniversary date, a uh, uh, church anniversary or uh, pastor's anniversary, and you have this great big basket uh, uh, and you want to be a blessing to the, the man of God or the woman of God, and you have this great big basket and you have put certain goods, certain food, certain fruit, certain things in it, and no matter what other people get, no matter what they give their leader, you are the one that gives them this basket, a basket that you've set aside. You've set aside for this purpose and you've, you didn't let nothing happen to it, no matter what he gets. But this one right here, you specially pick this. You set it aside all the month long, all the year long. This group right here, this group is specifically set apart for God. Not just anybody here. Let's look at it. And I beheld the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah 
were sealed 12,000. The tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Naphtali was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin was sealed 12,000. <clears throat> and I look at this and I begin to marvel. And I'm like, wow, God, what, a, what an awesome God. And it's only right, it's only right that those that really love God would, uh, would stand with them and carry out this 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 thing that God had. matter of fact I'm I need to find a scripture real quick I I did not put this in my uh, notes I didn't put it in my notes I should have and I didn't so let me let me scour where I need to go let me uh, give me one minute. Give me one minute. Wait a minute. Uh, mm. Okay, good, good. We, we are at the place where I need to be. We're at the place where I need to be. And I just want to share with you because I hear it. I don't know why I'm hearing it, but I'm hearing it. Somebody's asking. I don't see a text. I don't see a comment. But I hear you in my spirit. Who are the 44,000? What's so significant about the 44,000? I told you that they are significant. And you said, but why are they significant? And I said that this is set aside, this is set apart for God. But why are they set apart for God? Because God is special like that. And you want him to be special like that. I know that's just a quick version. But you want the real version. You want the biblical version, right? You want the biblical version of why are there 144,000 who God loved them that way and that he want to seal them. Well, let's talk about the 144,000 and why God invests so much into them. Because And don't look at this and say, well, I'm, a, I'm one of those 144,000, y'all. I'm going to be one of them. And then there's a group of people who they believe that they are the 144,000. But it's too many of them. They feel they are the 144,000 and that uh, they were, they, they've given their life for this cause. But it's thousands and thousands of them. It's too many of them. Probably a million of them. And, and it's too many for them to just uh, say that this is the deal with them. And then they just, you know, because that means if God is only sealed 144,000, and you got more than that, somebody's not going to make it. That's because they, they, they that's not what he's saying. Because the scripture will speak for itself. And I tell you to read the scripture and uh, the, let the scripture speak. Let me start at verse 1 of chapter 14 of Revelations. Chapter 1, um, chap, um, verse 1, verse 1 of chapter 14. Verse 1 of chapter 14. You're going to hear this again. But just let me talk about it right now. And it says in um, chapter 14, verse 1, it says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their forehead. What? Having what? Their father's name written in their forehead. But hold up. He said, don't even touch the earth. Don't even do this. Don't even do that. Until they have, uh, until they have sealed. There it is. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the service of our God in their foreheads. And then it says, uh, 144,000 having their father's name written in their foreheads. That's what the ceiling has to do. They have to have the name of their father in their forehead. And I heard a voice from heaven and the voice of many uh, waters and as the voices of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of the harpers harping with their heart and they sung 
as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song. What? No man could learn that song. What? No man could learn that song. Why? Because it weren't for them. Everybody can't sing that song. See, there are songs that, you know, in church, everybody can sing. Everybody, we sing it, whether we're authorized to sing it or not. Whether we, no, we, we, we sing it, we sing it because we want you to believe that we are saved. We sing it because we want you to believe that we are worshipers. We sing it because we want you to believe that we are praisers. We sing it because we want you to believe that these are things are true. But in the realm of heaven, in the realm of heaven, if you didn't live a thing, you couldn't sing the thing. If you wasn't about the thing, you couldn't sing the thing. If, 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 if that was not you, that was not your spiritual DNA, you could not sing it. So this is what it's saying here. And it says, uh, and I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voices of her harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song, but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. That's what. That's how they happened. That's how they got there. They were redeemed from the earth. Who? 144,000 were redeemed from the earth. So it doesn't stop there. It gives you to know more about this 144,000. These are they which were not defiled by women. These are they that were not married. These are they that never had sex. These are they that never broke their vow. These are they that never lost their virginity. These are they. You remember uh, the Bible didn't talk, do a whole lot of talk about eunuchs. These are spiritual eunuchs. These are eunuchs. That's what these are. These are eunuchs. And, and, and uh, so you remember in the Old Testament when um, when the, uh, uh, the man of God was of uh, what's his name what's his name what's his name we're going not elijah elijah did not kill jezebel jehu when jehu went up against Je uh, jezebel uh he came to the where she were she looked out of the palace window and gave the greeting of the day and uh, uh, jehu also gave a greeting but it was really to um those that was in the window with her and he says if you're for me if you're for me, throw her down. Who is for me? And some eunuchs looked out the window. <laughs> some eunuchs looked out the window. Who are the eunuchs? Never been defiled by women. They were men who did not give up. They didn't lose their virginity. Never got married. And they felt they could not get married. Because everybody, uh, uh, there were some people that was made to be eunuchs. Some was born eunuchs. Some gave themselves over to be eunuchs. But <clears throat> so... This is a whole different classification of people. This is not something to ju you just play with. This is not something you, you can just call yourself a eunuch, but yet you're having sex. No, that's not you. You call yourself a eunuch, but then you done, you, you, you done broke your virginity. No, that's not you. You, you. you call yourself a eunuch, but you've been raped. You done went through peoples. No, 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 that, that's not you. Uh, uh, and so there's a, a list of people who want to say that they're eunuchs, and that's not who they are. That's not who they are. I see you, Pastor Deborah. I see you. I, I see you. And you said castrated men. Castrate men. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, people who, and, and even, these are people who, even if they, and, and let me say this. Let me say this now. Because there were some who were born to be eunuch. Some made themselves eunuch. And some was eunuchs that they gave themselves over to God. And there were some that did not cut themselves. and didn't have to be cut. But that just wasn't what they were going to do. They just weren't going to do that. They just didn't have the desire. The desire was not there. The desire was not there. They wasn't trying to do it. If, 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 if no, they just weren't going to do it. Whether they was, whether it was a free will thing, and most not not all of them was a free will thing. But for those who were free will, some free will just didn't want to get cut. Some of them were, but not all of them were. And um, so. Uh, this is what it said, it said, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song, but the 
144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. They were redeemed from the earth. God chose them from the earth. Check this. These are they which were not defiled by women. Let's keep reading. For they are virgins. What? They are virgins. They are virgins. These are they which, and let me go back to that virgin thing. You know, in the Bible, in the Bible, when when Jesus was giving that um, parable of the virgins, the five wives, the five wives and the five foolish virgins, oftentimes we liken the virgins to that of women. We were calling the women, but no, it wasn't women. It, it weren't women. It weren't women. It said virgins. But oftentimes when they said virgin, we just automatically assume talking about women and not men. But no, they weren't the women. That's not our lesson. We'll talk about that another day, another time. And yeah, we'll probably go in depth with that. But uh, anyway, let's continue to read. Look what it says. These are they which, okay, they for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb. Whithersoever he goeth, they follow the lamb. Whithersoever he goeth, they have sold themselves out. They have given themselves over to be in part of his camp, part of his life, and do what he do. And they follow the lamb. Whithersoever he goeth, the lamb talking about Jesus the Christ of God. And they followed him like Peter and James and John followed him. We're not talking about some of the other that was with him, some of the other, you didn't hear about them being with Jesus 24 seven, but there was some that you hear that have been with Jesus 24 seven, but some of them that were with Jesus, they had a family. I said how they followed him, but this is say they followed the lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men. It gives you to understand. These were redeemed from among men men. They walked among us. They walked among us, talked among us, looked like us, act like us, but they were redeemed among men. Being the first fruit unto God. Who? The first fruit unto God. What that mean? What that means, somebody? That mean they were the firstborn. Don't, don't get it twisted. These are the firstborn. The firstborn. The firstborn son being the firstborn unto God and to the Lamb. Don't forget. See, sometimes we don't go back to the Old Testament. We'll forget that what the Lord says, the firstborn was his. I want the firstborn. The son of the firstborn, give me that. Set that aside for me. Set that aside for me. And when you set that aside for him, then the Lord would choose the one that he want. From that, if every tribe were obedient, to God, and they did what the Lord told them to do, then he would select from that uh, 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 that number who he want to follow him. But, you know, they kind of downplay it. They don't, and nah, now nah, they, they just, now nah, they don't give a care about that. They don't give a care about who's the firstborn. They don't honor that who's the firstborn. Nowadays, they don't care whether they have offsprings or not. But when you're understanding the Lord, when you're talking the Lord's language, that's big, that's big stuff to him. All right. Uh, but they were the first fruit unto God and to the lamb. And in their mouth were found no guile. <laughs> in their mouth was found no guile. For, for they are without fault before the throne of God. They are without fault before the throne of God. They make sure that they did everything they could to get it right. They are without fault before the throne of God. And then it goes on, says, I saw another angel. Amen. Thank God for that. I just had to give you that. Who were the 144,000? And perhaps we'll talk about that when we get to chapter 14. So, amen. Just a little something to chew on who that were. And so that's uh, that just goes against some theologians theory that they are a different church, a church that you see them and they go around, they do their thing. Now it's just different. Read the whole stroll, read the whole book. 
understand the whole book and see what the Lord have in store for us. <clears throat> and so verse number nine, verse number nine, it says, and this, after this, I beheld this. In other words, that's one ceiling. Hold off. That's one ceiling. Seal all of those. Those 144,000. Seal them. It says, after this, I beheld, and lo, a great number, which no man could number, of all nations, kindred, and people, and tongue, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, and palms in their hands. Let me stop here, because the Spirit of the Lord, I, I, I want to say the Spirit of the Lord. Please, Lord, let me say the spirit of the Lord. And, you know, some some of us get so comfortable say, God spoke to me. And God told me this. God told me that. God, this, this. There are some that probably, and let me just say this. Maybe there are some who really stand in the presence of God and God speak to them like that. God speak directly to them. He don't speak to an angel. He doesn't speak to his servant, Jesus. He doesn't. They don't get it from Jesus. I don't know. Maybe they are special. Maybe they're special like that. But from what I understood, the Lord says, this is my beloved son. Talk about Jesus. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. That, that all power under heaven and earth is in his hands. So the operations of the heaven and the earth, we go through Jesus now. So it is it's not God speaking to us. It's Jesus that's going to be speaking to us. And he's going to speak to us through that of his spirit. He's going to speak to us through the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is going to speak to us. So I'm a, I'm a little bit hesitant that when I start saying, God said this to me, God said, and the Lord, this is what God said to me. I'm holding, I'm, I'm not so quick to say it like that, but I want to be a little more clear, a little more pointed in how I say a thing. Uh -huh, but uh, I said something before, and I said, I think it was the last seating that uh, when I was teaching the lesson, and I said that uh, uh, everybody in heaven not going to be in white. Everybody in heaven, in heaven, everybody in heaven not going to be wearing white. Everybody in heaven not going to wear white. Uh, because when you start hearing certain things that they're in white, they're in white. Uh, that's because that's for that grouping of people. And then I heard the spirit says, go back and correct that. So I'm here to correct that. I'm here to correct that because what I heard the Spirit say, what I heard the Spirit says is white is, uh, is the normal attire and it's the attire for salvation. White represents salvation. White represents those who've been redeemed. White represents those who have, have, have came through the washing of the blood of the Lamb. White represents those who have plunged beneath this flow of flow who believed him and, and their sins had been washed their sins had been forgiven and that white we're talking about the white robe that white robe represents that those who have came by way of the blood those who have came by way of salvation if they've come up any other way then the lord will speak to us on that and if there's any other color the lord will speak to us of that and, and because he did not say don't tell them that heaven is is ordained totally in white he didn't say that and i'm not gonna say it's all about you know everybody's in white i'm not gonna say it because he didn't say that because but what i said about a different tire that uh, everybody's not gonna be in white but then he had me to understand uh that uh white represents salvation for those who came by way of the blood those who had their lives redeemed are going to wear white. And so when you hear that, don't be misled. So those talk about the 44,000. <clears> when you talk about the 44,000, they, they too will be clad in white. Then when this right here, look what it says. A number that no man could number. After this I beheld and lo a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and all kindreds, all people, all tongue. You thought it was only for the Jews? Hold on. You thought salvation was only for the Jews? This debunks that. This tell you, no, it wasn't for that. 
Because God wants you to understand, I didn't come only for the Jews. God had a plan for the Jews. God had a plan for the Jews to serve as uh, uh, um, the one that would go and redeem the world to him. That would, well, I say redeem, that would draw the world to him. To cry loud and spare not, so that men, women, boys and girls of all walk of life would come to know him. This is That was God's plan. But it wasn't just for the Jews only. I know it says salvation is of the Jews, but what that's really saying, and it didn't say for the Jews, it said of the Jews. There's a little difference there. And it's a little difference of what, what, what it means to us. And they're the starting point. They're the, they're the template. They are the, the reasoning for a lot of stuff, but it's not the totality of the thing. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, and of all nations, of all kindred, of all people, all tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb. What were they? clothed with white robes and palms in their hands? Not everybody's going to have palms. These have palms in their hands. White is the common attire of all who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Father. Amen. And I definitely wanted to make sure that I got that right because I don't want to go on the record as misleading the people of God. And oftentimes we do that with intent to deceive, with intent to mislead. You know, reading the scriptures and looking at it from a different perspective, that's one thing. But just trying to mislead God people, you're lying to them, telling them something that God didn't say, doing things that God didn't say. When your intent is to deceive, your, your intent is to defraud, your intent is to water down. No, 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 no. That's not why we're here. Our reasoning for being here is to give you the word of God for the purpose of building you up, for the purpose of edifying you, for the purpose of motivating you so that you would dig in for yourself, get to know God, build relationship with him. This is our reasoning. Amen. It's not about uh, 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 you, you, so I can be, I can friend you. you we, we can be friends and get to know each other. And, and no, nah, no, nah, it ain't about that. We don't do that here. <clears throat> There's a lot of uh, people who are looking for a hookup. They got lines for hookups. They got dating line for people who are looking to date somebody. This is not that dating line. This is the line that we're talking about dating. We're talking about being in, 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 in oneness with Christ, being in, in an affair with Christ, being in a relationship with Christ. Then we're talking that language. But other than that, we're talking getting to know him. Cry with a loud voice. Cry with a loud voice. <clears throat> they had white robes in their hands. Yeah, uh -huh. white robes in their hand, palms. Yeah. So, yeah. And, 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 and cry with a loud voice. These are they that cry with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne. All the angels stood right about the throne and about the elders and four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God. Who did that? All of them did that. First, first, the, the number that no man could number, the number that no man could number, begin to shout and cry with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God, which set us upon the throne and to the Lamb. And when they said that, all the angels stood round about the throne. Looked like they just came in from wherever they were. They just stopped doing whatever they were doing. And they just came in and all the angels stood round about the throne. And also round about the throne, they didn't move. They were there. The, four, the 24 elders were there and the four beasts. And they fell down before the throne on their faces and worshiped God. And they began to... Uh, uh, really give luminance to the worship. And they joined in saying, Amen. Blessings and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Can you imagine you're praising God and then all of the people, all of the commoners, 
a number that no man can number, begin to shout, Salvation to our God, which set us upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And then while you're doing that, there's a huge, massive congregation. Then the elders and the four beasts, they fall down before the throne on their faces. And they begin to say, Amen. Blessings and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving and honor, power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And they're worshiping God. And they're in harmony. I wasn't in harmony. They were harmonizing. They were doing it in unison. They were doing it in one's oneness. And it says, which are, and then, it, then one of the elders, one of the elders, one of the elders say, uh, answered, saying unto me, so what are these? What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And which came they? As if he's asking a question, like as if he don't know. Oh, you know quite well. You're an elder. Not an elder like we knew you know, men who are elders, but this is something more sacred, more honored, more, 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 um, more divine. He said, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? Which claim they? So John is hearing him say this, and John know exactly what he's saying. And he says unto him, sir, thou knoweth. He says unto him, to give the answer. These are they which came out of the great tribulation. What? These are they which came out of great tribulation. Not the. Notice, I did say the. These are they which came out of great tribulation. There's great tribulation and there is the great tribulation. Somebody might say, well, it's one and the same, Jane Williams. It's one and the same. You may say so. We're going to read forward until we find out. It might be. But until then, I'm going to follow the strip. That's all I'm doing right now. I'm following the strip. I'm not adding to it. I'm following the strip. I'm not reading somebody else's thesis. I'm not reading somebody else's commentary, you know, as as to hear what Matthew Henry has to say, a J, uh, a Dake Finnings, a Finnings Dakes has to say, uh, someone else has to say. No, we're not doing that right now. We listen to what the Holy Ghost say. We're reading the strip. We're not going to get ahead. Now, when I went and started talking about that of the 144,000, that's because uh, as I began to read through our lesson, I began to just read through the scriptures. As I began to read through all the revelation, it just stood out. It just, pssst. and I'm like, oh my God, there it is. That's what I've been looking for. That's one of the things I was looking for. And I'm sure that God's going to give me more of this, but this is what I want us to understand right here. Notice what it says. Notice what the scripture says here. All right. It says, and I said unto him, sir, thou knoweth. He said unto me, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. These are they who repented. These are they who washed their robes washed the road, who've, who've actually confessed Christ, who've, who've invited him into their life, who said, listen, no matter what happened, I believe Christ. I'm not going to recant my statement. I am going to go down in history saying that I love him with all of my heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. This is what this is saying. Therefore, are they before the throne of God? This is why they're before the throne of God. This is why they're here. And they're there at a good time. There is, uh, see, my my view is there's a there's a there's great tribulation. People are going through tribulation, great tribulation, great testings. Some of them now. Some of them are being beheaded now. Some of them are being martyred now. Some people are being martyred. Some are being whipped. Some are being beaten, and, and, and for whatever, just like they were when the disciples had just gone through a great uh, a, a great opposition when they've been through some things people was losing their lives and but they did not recant their statement and at the end result people held on to that and so there are people who are being tried right now but because they did not recant their statement they did not go back they accept salvation i've been talking i was talking about um 
something very few people have caught on to. And I'll talk about that of the the dream of of uh, Pharaoh. Remember the dream of Pharaoh. And I talked about the Pharaoh season. We talked about seven years. We talked about seven years of famine, seven years of plenty, seven years of famine, seven years of plenty, and keep going like that. And then notice now, when you follow that line, when you follow that, when if we as a people just follow that, like what the Jews normally do, we just follow that lineage and understand that after every seven years, every seven years of plenty, there will be seven years of drought. Every seven years of, after every seven years of drought, seven years of plenty. And we keep following that. Certain things are going to happen. And then we're going to come to a point wherein after we've, after we've come out seven years of great trauma, hardship, or seven years of plenty, we're going to go through a season when we look like things are happening. Look like uh, we're going to come out of a year of seven years of good, seven years of plenty. And then we're going to go into that year, seven years is facing us. And we're going to be start going through testings and trying, testings and trying, testings and trying. And this is called the lesser, the lesser year, three and a half years, three and a half years with the lesser year. It's going to be some ups and downs and some going through, some persevering. But at the ending of it, at the ending portion, three, uh, 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 three and a half years, it's a total seven years. And when it's going to be huge, great persecution, great persecution like none have ever seen. And the Bible speaks of that, but that is broken down in the middle or, or the half of one of those seven years period. And, and where it's going to start off one way, but it's going to end another way. So when you follow that, people, I'm telling you, this is biblical. I'm not making stuff up. I'm not throwing stuff in there just to be doing that. No, this is all biblical that I'm telling you. But remember the dream of Pharaoh. Go back, read it, study it, look at it. Remember Pharaoh's dream. My time is about up. So allow me, if you will, to read the rest of the scripture. I'll, I'll try to, to inject something, but let's read what it says. And I saw... Yeah, these are they who washed their robes, made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God. This is why they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. This is why they are there to serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on, and I'm talking the S-U-N, neither shall the S-U-N light on them, nor any heat. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountain of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. What a joy, what a peace, what protection, what inspiration, what motivation, what glory, what honor, what praise, what what promotion that these are they which went through some things. They went through some things. But then there's another group of people who are going to go through some things that will not be in that classification. There's another classification of people who are not going to be there. This classification of people is from a different, and we'll talk about the difference later when I put both of them up before you. We want to do that. We want to talk about one set of uh, uh, tribulation and then another set of tribulation and those people that go through then and one versus the other. We'll talk about that. But right now, my time is up. We're going to have to get ready to close. We trust that you've gotten something out of this lesson. We trust that you've learned something about the 144,000. We talked about them. We talked about the ceiling. But this here is just the culmination between seal number one through seal number six. There's one seal more that need to be broken. One seal more that need to be opened. And we'll talk about that when we come again. We thank God for this time. Thank you for being with us. 
Amen. Thank you, beautiful people. We God, God bless you. God keep you in heaven. Smile upon you. Amen. Father, we thank you for what you've done, what you've given to us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for how you shared your word with us. Father, we stand on your word in the name of Jesus. We give you the glory and the honor and praise, salvation and strength, power and might, wisdom and honor is yours in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, glorious God. Let your will be done. Let your truth be heard and told aloud in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're here with us and you do not know the Lord as your Savior, why not accept him as your Savior? Why not invite him into your life? You're going to need him. One of the whole reason, matter of fact, earlier in our nine o'clock Bible study, we begin to talk about seven seven people, seven classification of people who cannot be saved, who cannot be saved. And one that was on that list who cannot be saved is uh, an unbeliever. Unbeliever cannot be saved because they just simply choose not to believe God. They choose not to believe him. See, and, and to be a, somebody said, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Unbelievers can be saved. Unbelievers cannot be saved. That has to do with people who you've heard the word. You've heard it. You have all the pertinent information you need. You've heard the word, but you choose not to believe him. This is not somebody who operates in ignorance. Don't know nothing about the word. This is not somebody who don't know about God, don't know the word, don't know his Christ, don't know what's going on. This is not that person. An unbeliever. You Before him, you set before him light and darkness, right and wrong. You've set before him the narrative of God, his father, uh, um, God, the father, Jesus, his son, and the Holy Ghost. You told him about heaven and hell. You told him about death, hell, and the grave. But he chooses not to believe. An unbeliever who don't want to believe, who will not believe. He cannot be saved. Well, yes, there's seven different groups, but that's what one of them. We had great uh, discussion about that earlier today. Wish we could have shared it with you, but nonetheless, I want you to know <clears throat> this is the whole purpose of Jesus of God doing what he's doing so that you believe his son. The whole reasoning, God is not doing a whole lot of talking and God is not moving things around and, and treating you like you are spoiled, treating you like you are his pet, his private only one. The reason why he's not doing that, he's investing and trusting that you believe in his son, Jesus the Christ. If you simply believe him, Trust him and stand on that. That's what's going to gain you salvation. But what's, what, what sends you to hell is you're choosing not to believe. Jesus coming on the earth and dying for our sin, that dealt with the sin matter. Jesus coming into this earth, dying for your sins, dying that you might have right to the tree of life, that take care of the sin matter. Now, the, the part that you've got to play is whether you believe that or not. That's where you come in at. Do you believe him? The whole man of the gospel to get you to believe. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his son to deal with the sin, to, to eradicate sin. Whosoever believeth in him. That's the main thing. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Believe. For the one who choose not to believe, they'll be damned. I didn't make that up. That's scripture. I trust that you'll accept the Lord as your Savior. And to do so, just invite him and say, Father, here I stand. I stand with something new. And the new thing that I stand with is today that I'm recognizing I don't have you in my life. And I want you in my life. I'm here to invite you into my life. As I do this day, come Lord Jesus into my life. Come into this broken vessel. Forgive me of all sins. The Bible says, he that knows to do good and do it not to him it is sin. Father, I've sinned and I'm asking you to forgive me of all of my sins. Wipe it from my slate. Invest me into your family. Bright, bring me into your family. Save me, turn my life around. 
And today I confess you as my Lord and my Savior and my God. And from this point forward, help me to move forward, learning to do your will, learning to read, to pray, to write, to invite you into my life, to have a relationship with you in my life so that I can in turn do what this man is doing sharing this gospel with others in Jesus mighty name. Amen. If you've done that and willing to do that, keep following us. Keep following us and send us a shout out. Send us a message. Send us a, a comment. Let us know that you've accepted the Lord into your life. Amen. And now you are a believer. God bless you. God keep your heaven smile upon you. We'll see you again. Uh, today's Friday. We'll see you again on Monday. The Lord is willing. Be blessed. Have a great day.